Aborting innocent lives in America won't save innocent lives in Israel. War in Israel has captured the attention of the world, demanding a serious look at how Iranian-backed Hamas was able to attack innocent civilians, behead babies, as well as rape, torture, and kidnap women, children, and elderly who they are now pledging to execute if Israel retaliates. This loss of life, Americans among them, is being called Israel's 9-11. Who helped make this happen? Did the up to 80 billion freed by the Biden administration of taxpayer dollars, along with resources from former President Obama, fund the atrocities that we saw? Is it endemic to the nature of the conflict? There was a lot of blame to go around, but one group singled out early makes no sense in this. The pro-life objection to making the military an abortion vendor is not the reason the initial response to long-planned Hamas violence fell flat. MSNBC, ignoring the barbarity of Hamas, pointed to the lack of support for abortion as key to understanding the attack on Israel. If only Senator Tommy Tuberville of Alabama had allowed the Biden administration to illegally insert abortion into military spending, all would suddenly be well. Because of Tuberville's opposition, former CIA and NSA Director General Michael Hayden said that the senator should be, quote, not be considered a member of the human race, end quote. This comment actually led Senator Tuville to contacting Capitol Police. Political has-beens like David Frum and the often bitter Bill Kristol added their voices to those calling for a fast track to abortion spending as if ending the lives of military family members would better prepare our fighting force to notice Hamas or support one of our most loyal allies. But the political posturing is typical of abortion zealots who want abortion tourism paid for by us, the taxpayers. In a letter to the Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin this March, several U.S. senators reminded the Biden official that such a thing is, to be clear, unlawful. Twelve senators, including Senator Tuberville, wrote, quote, The policies of the Department of Defense announced on February 16, 2023, are a blatant attempt to circumvent numerous federal statutes that distance the military from abortion-related decisions. Namely, it would force taxpayers to subsidize abortions by paying for service members or their dependents to travel to obtain the procedure and by granting additional leave for this purpose. Facilitating a service member's abortion through this channel violates the spirit of 10 U.S.C. 1093, which prohibits the Department of Defense from funding elective abortions. It also brazenly departs from the Department of Defense's historic interpretation of its travel authorities in 37 U.S.C. 452 and 453. These regulations authorize official travel for many activities, but notably they say nothing about funding travel to receive an elective abortion. Nothing at all. Taking such significant liberties with federal law is a grave matter, end quote. Reserving taxpayer resources for military support seems a common sense thing to do. For example, these funds could have been used to monitor terrorist chatter or provide more substantial soldier salaries to bolster diminishing recruitment that we now have. Yet, here we are. Thousands dead, missing, babies murdered in their homes, And it's more abortion that somehow will turn the tide and stop the Hamas terrorists? Is that really what they want? Fewer babies drawing breath in America? To be clear, there is sadly nothing preventing members of the military from using their own money and time to have an abortion. Rather, Senator Tuberville knows it's taxpayer money and time that are at stake. The Biden administration's social experiment with our brave fighting men and women is great cause for alarm as the world seems poised for an expanding conflict everywhere. In the U.S., groups like Black Lives Matter, willing to engage in riots and mayhem, are publicly standing with Hamas. And protesters in New York City flash swastikas. Add to that the missing terrorist who walked across Biden's open border, and it's clear we're going to need a strong national defense if those who praise violent deeds act violently. Former Speaker Representative Kevin McCarthy warned that last week. He said, quote, we should wake ourselves up. 
we could have the same thing happen next week to us, end quote. Blaming Senator Tuberville's opposition to abortion funding for any lack of readiness in the military is more than disingenuous. The radically pro-abortion Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer could bring up the military candidates for a vote one at a time if he didn't want to hold on to his abortion talking point and if the Democrats could drop their point altogether. Rahm Emanuel, the former chief of staff to then-President-elect Barack Obama, articulated this cold calculus once saying, quote, you never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that is it's an opportunity to do things you think you could not do before, end quote. Perhaps Schumer is a fan of the Rahm Emanuel strategy. Democrats couldn't fund abortion in the military before, but there is something exceptionally cold about saying that defending the innocent in Israel demands the loss of innocent lives to abortion in the United States. Using the crisis to insert a pro-abortion agenda into military spending goes far beyond the ordinary shamelessness of politics.